So we can start. Hello, yeah. everyone. Welcome to the Future of Fashion Inclusion Trousers Edition. We are so happy to have you. We have a great panel, a great lineup for you. Experts in many fields and brands and advocates. So I welcome you with our co-host, Samantha Bullock from Imperfection, Angela Bianchi from Virgo Image, and I am Nancy Connor from Smart Adaptive Clothing. So please allow me to introduce our our first panelist is Sophie Morgan from the United K. Sophie is a TV presenter, a United Nations moderator, a speaker with Human Rights Watch, Disability Advocacy, a global ambassador for Toyota and Women and Inclusive Education for Leonard Cheshire. Also a consultant for Target, special advisor to Disability Rights for Human Rights Watch. Sophie is an award-winning disability advocate and social entrepreneur who was paralyzed in a car crash when she was 18 years old. Determined to channel her adversity into opportunity, she sees her challenges as unique chance for creativity. Sophie has hosted live Parasport events on Channel 4. In the spring of 2021, Sophie's debut book, a memoir, will be published. Sophie has also been voted in the top 10 of the most influential people with a disability in the UK. Our next panelist, Zazel Shava Ogara, is the founder and artistic director of ZCO Dance Project a physically integrated dance company whose goal is to create performances that are witty, soulful, intelligent, and powerful. A native New Yorker, Zazel holds a Bachelor of Arts in Dance Performance. A presidential arts scholar has performed off-Broadway in many productions in the U.S. and abroad. Her modeling career includes two Essence magazine covers, runway jobs, national and regional commercials, and has done voiceover work. In 2002, Zazelle was diagnosed with a brain tumor, which paralyzed her right side and caused a slight speech impediment and cognitive loss. Zazelle teaches dance as a healing form to the disabled and non-disabled alike, continuing to share her infectiously positive and fun spirit with others. She's also passionate about raising public awareness about the challenges facing and the gifts offered by those with disabilities. Zazelle can be heard on podcasts and webinars, including the National Foundation of the Arts, and most recently appeared on the Dr. Oz Show to share her life as a brain tumor survivor. Recent performances include the music video, The Bigger Plans Project. Our next panelists are Belgian-based Sophie and Jesse, the co-founders and occupational therapists have worked together as colleagues for more than 10 years in a rehabilitation center. They noticed every day how difficult it can be for people with a physical disability to wear or put on clothing. In 2016, they combined their years of experience towards the production of fashionable items of clothing. This is how So Yes, a clothing brand for people with a physical disability or age-related difficulties was born. Right now, wheelchair trousers, wheelchair skirts, jackets with magnetic zippers, and trousers with an elastic carry the So Yes label. Their mission is to provide maximum support to people thanks to their advice and clothes so they can be independent as possible and feel comfortable. Our next panelist is 
Jesse. Jesse is the founder of Brisbane based Christina Stevens and wants women to have the choice to feel confident and empowered in clothing that looks as good as it feels. Her vision is to bring inclusive and adaptive clothing to the mainstream fashion retailers. In the early stages of creating pieces that are discreetly functional and fit for purpose, but beautiful and desirable by customers with and without disabilities. Christina Stevens was inspired by Jesse's mom after all, after a fall some years ago. The injuries prevented her mom, who has always been very fashion and health conscious, from dressing with ease in her usual classy and understated style. After researching the fashion available in the market for style conscious women living with a short or long term physical challenge, Jesse realized there was a social and business opportunity in front of her. Thank you so much for the panel. We're thrilled to be here. And a quick little blurb about me I am the founder of Smart Adaptive Clothing. We make easy on, easy off, super stylish, fun clothing for women and men. It can be worn by teens, adults, seniors. We are so thrilled to be here. And I will pass this over to Ms. Samantha. Hi guys, welcome. I'm very happy to have this team here on board. All the lovely ladies, thanks a lot for joining us and everyone that is also here. Uh, my name is Samantha Bullock. I'm the founder of the SB Shop, Imperfection in Fashion and I'm a activist towards uh, inclusion. And saying that, I'm going to head to Angela that she's going to introduce also herself. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for being here. For me, it's tonight, because it's 9 p.m. here in Milan. <laughs> So um, I'm really happy to be here. This is our third or fourth conference, and it's it's really, really an expected success with all these participants. So I'm a personal stylist based in, based in Italy, and I have my own agency that is called Virgo Image. And I can proudly say that we have launched a non-exclusive fashion and beauty and lifestyle blog, because I guess all bloggers are very proud of their exclusive tips. Well, our non-exclusive. <laughs> They're pretty inclusive so it's an inclusive fashion uh, blog and if I may add um, a couple of words uh, before uh, starting with a question to our panelists I wanted to congratulate with Giselle and with Nancy from Smart Adaptive Clothing because today um, we received um, the information that we actually won with our video, The Bigger Plans Project in the category uh, Disability Issues, the Indie Fest in California. So this is this is really great. And Zazel was our star. Lach is not here to, tonight or today. I don't know where she's based at the moment. Uh, she's uh, the co-producer and director uh, with me. And Smart Up Clothing was one of the greatest supporters. So um, I just took this little uh, time to celebrate with you all. And now we can start with uh, with our panelists if you agree. So we have some questions and because we would like you all to contribute with your questions in the end and if you have any, you know, anything that you would like to share with our panelists or with us, then we will make sure that we have enough time for that. So each of our panelists will have a couple of minutes for each question. It's not enough, we know that, but we'll do our best that uh, we all take our time to share our thoughts. Okay. So, uh, um, the first question would be, of course, tell us about your story. And I would go in order as I see you on my screen, if that's okay with you. <laughs> so the first ones that I see are the founders of So Yes Adaptive Clothing. So would you tell us something about your story? Good evening or good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, I think we had a great introduction already. So um, we are colleagues as occupational therapists. 
and uh, we are uh, we have started so yes uh, five years ago because we saw opportunities we saw um, a lot of problems, problems with yeah. uh, with our clients that uh, were in a wheelchair but they had browsers that were too short or you could uh, see too much behind uh, they weren't uh, uh, long high enough, enough, or high enough. Yeah. yes so that's why we uh, were looking for clothes uh, here in Belgium or in the, in the neighborhood um, but we couldn't find any or they weren't fashionate enough so uh, that's why we decided to uh, launch our own uh, our own company and our own brand thank you Next on my screen is Azel. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. I'm here in uh, lovely New York City. My name is Azel Shava O'Gara. I am the founder and artistic director of ZCO Dance Project, which is a physically integrated dance company, which I started about uh, six, seven years ago. And it consists of persons of mixed abilities. I started the company after I became disabled um, when I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. A meningioma, it's a benign brain tumor, which uh, left me paralyzed on my um, right side and with cognitive deficits and uh, a few other problems. However, um, I continued to dance after I became disabled. And one of the things that really um, struck me when I became disabled was when I was in occupational and physical therapy and they told me that I wasn't able to do certain things and I was so aggressive and so uh, proud of myself that I continued to move. And that is the reason why I started the dance company. But one of the main problems um, in physical and occupational therapy is as an adult, when you're hit with a neurological um, chronic illness, you're faced with mobility problems. And when I was there in occupational therapy, I would always tell them, how am I going to be able to dress myself? That was always the question. And they would look at me like I was crazy <laughs> because you always needed assistance. You know, I needed an assistant uh, to dress myself for the first time in my life. So I often talked about, and this was 18 years ago, how can I get clothes to, that are adaptive, that are, can suit me? And that's why I'm so happy to be here because now it's really blowing up and really helping persons with disabilities. So I'm so proud to be here. Thank you. So next on my screen is Sophie Morgan. Hi, everyone. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know where to start, really. I guess I'll start. Um, so firstly, hi, I'm from the UK. Sorry, it's a bit dark. My I haven't got very good lighting. I hope everyone can see me OK. So I um, had a car crash when I was about 18, which is in 2003, which is about 18 years ago. So I've been paralyzed, uh, paraplegic since then. Um, and much like you, Zazel, I kind of, I was really, once I got over the rehabilitation side of things and I'd sort of adjusted to my spinal injury using a wheelchair, et cetera, I was like, right, what am I going to look like, you know, as a young girl? So I became very interested in, in finding solutions to some of the problems that I was facing, not just in terms of trying to find clothes that fit because I was sitting down all the time, but also I wanted them to look good. I wanted them to, to feel good and look good. So I kind of, um, I, my my work has gone into different directions. I moved into television and I worked as a TV presenter. But on that journey, I kind of then filtered into working in fashion and in retail. So I started off about maybe 12 years ago working with retailers to provide some solutions around disability representation. In particular, I wanted to see more wheelchair users being sort of visibly present both in the media but in, in retail in the retail space so i designed a mannequin wheelchair um which i won't go into to, into too much about now but that kind of is where i started i wanted to try and get retailers to start thinking about disabled customers um and that project is a sort of as a side project, a side hustle, as it were, to my TV presenting, has slowly grown over the years. And as you said at the very beginning, um, I now have sort of consulted with some of the larger retailers in the world, really, actually, like Target and some others, about how to be more 
representative, but also more inclusive across the board, whether it's be, you know, in their marketing, whether it be in their design process, whether it be in the, the way that they employ disabled people or uh, communicate with disabled customers, the sort of package of making sure that disabled people get treated correctly in the retail space is, is really important to me. So I work in that area as well. But I've also worked as an ambassador with a number of fashion designers and um, you know girls who who like me have seen that they, there's a problem and need to go and uh, provide solutions so kind of small little um, projects and startups that are happening I've been working with some great designers recently and helping them promote what they're doing so I guess I've got a kind of professional side of this I've got a personal side to this and then also there's my other work with um, just TV presenting and all the other things that I do so I do a lot of different stuff but to be here today to talk about trousers it's a, it's, a, it's a good subject, I've got a lot to say about it. So yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. So next on my screen is Jesse Sadler, founder of Christina Stephens. Good morning, good evening, everyone. It's uh, tea drinking time in Australia at 6 a.m. this morning. Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I, I must say, I, I feel slightly overwhelmed by the colleagues that uh, are on this call. Um, because I came into the inclusive fashion industry, um, as Nancy has introduced through a personal experience through my mum having an accident. Um, and so we were out shopping one day and she had a fall and she smashed both of her elbows. Um, she's a very, she was at the time 65, a very young 65 year old, very healthy, active, uh, huge, um, pride in her appearance and uh, very health conscious. And so this this was a, um, a big change for her because she wasn't able to dress herself and she wasn't able to dress with ease. And so I could see that that was having a toll emotionally and she was very frustrated. So we were looking for options um, in Australia and we went online to look for options for her globally. And we're just really underwhelmed by uh, the one size fits all or gender neutral, or it, it was very functional um, pieces. And so we started this journey uh, pretty much together. I, I run Christina Stevens, but my mum, as most mums do, have a say in a lot of it. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm originally from the oil and gas sector. So the last five years have been quite a uh, steep learning curve for me and um, I'm very grateful for um, the Unique Women, Unique Stories design group that we've formed um, to help me get an understanding of what women living with different physical disabilities actually need from their everyday clothing. Thank you. So um, now I have, a, I have two questions. So one is for a couple of you and the other one is for the other two. Um, I would ask Sophie and Zazel, what do you look for in a brand? Is it more fashion or function or both or something else that we don't know? Um, Zazel comes first on my screen, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's such a good question. I look for, because I've always been known for being an artsy, creative, fashionable person. And because my background is in modeling, um, I look for fashion. But what's most important to me now is of course um, function. Um, so I look for both. Um, I like clothes that are very hip, artsy, creative, you know, that represent me. But oftentimes when I go look for pants, um, particularly because I wear an AFO brace, you know, there's a, a lot of the slim fitting pants and I can't get my brace into the pants. You know, it's uh, so awful. I mean, I'm looking, you know, going to various stores and what have you. So I want things that are functional that I can, you know, wear my brace in, of course, and that make me look good. I have to say, I'm pretty much the same. I think over the years, right? So when I initially had my injury, which was 18 years ago, I would go to brands that I just, I'd find a pair of trousers specifically and if they fit and they stayed on and I didn't get any too, too many problems with say too much marking on my skin because I'm a par I'm paralyzed and so I've got to be careful about, you know, zippers or marks or being, things being too tight or whatever. 
Uh, so functionally, if they if they fit, I just buy the same pair and just stick with it. And I was just kind of loyal to a brand. And I, if that worked, that worked. I have to say, price for me was never. If they put it this way, if they worked, I didn't mind what I paid for them because I would just, you know, wear them to death. But now I've started to see that, you know, my my standards have got a bit higher. I go to brands who I believe represent, know how to represent or also know how to speak to women like me. So I look at their social media presence. I want to know that they use girls that are modeling that are actually, you know, for example, have a difference uh, or they speak to real women. I, I'm also quite interested in the materials. I want to know where they got. So I guess what I'm saying is as we've evolved uh, sort of and got better at, at what we're doing, I think with brands being more conscious, I think that's allowed me to raise my standards and be a bit more of a conscious consumer as well. Um, but at the end of the day, it really comes back to the aesthetic because I, I, if something fits sometimes now, I just, I'm like, I want it to look good. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not, I, I'm like you, Zazel. I want to express my character in my clothes. You know, I don't want to just be a boring kind of, I want to stand out. If you can't stand up, stand out, as they say. So, you know, I like that. So I do want to have the aesthetic and the functionality kind of blended in. Yeah. Thank you. So now we have a question for the brands. <laughs> so about trousers in particular in this case, what does, um, why are they unique? What, what, what is it that makes them unique? Uh, so first on my screen is, so yes, adapted clothing. Uh, what our trousers make so uh, unique is that they are uh, made for people in wheelchair or with a disability um, with them. Not we look for something, we make it with them. They, they, um, they, try, they, yeah, they try it out, they, they say no, we want to find this or we want to uh, have the, the zipper uh, other, uh, in another way or... Um, we don't like a button and so we do it without the people together and that makes it a unique uh, band. We have a lot of people, we know a lot of people because uh, the rehabilitation center, I uh, still work there part time so I see a lot of people and we try out things and uh, it's really interesting to get all the feedback that we uh, get. Yeah. We have all our models are also um, people with a with disability. A disability yeah. So uh, we have a lot of people that try out our pants and sometimes it takes a year or more to have something new in our collection just because we only want to produce it when it's uh, definitely right. So uh, that's uh, very important to us. Amazing. I think that should be a rule for any brand. That's talking from a stylist point of view. Uh, Jesse, what is your what is your thought on this? Yeah, so we we um, produce a tapered leg track pant, and one version of that track pant has been made for women living with indwelling catheters, so short or long term indwelling catheters. So when we um, started looking at the range. We, it was quite broad, um, the first collection. So it was made for women with movement and mobility and dexterity restrictions. And we found a lot of those women were in wheelchairs and a lot of women in wheelchairs uh, long term are wearing indwelling catheters. And so um, how they, the different types of catheters, of course. Um, and so our first pant that we uh, um, designed was um, for a bag with with a long um, tube um, that women often tuck in or strap to their leg. And so this pant provides an internal pocket um, that in Australia, particularly when uh, the bags are strapped to your leg, it's hot, it's sticky because of the weather. And so we were just um, looking for something that was discreet, it was functional because it was taking away that pain point. Um, but they're very groovy. They have an ankle Velcro ankle strap, so you can change the look of the pant. Uh, so it can be a straight leg or it can be um, uh, a more snug fit at the bottom, which gives you a bit of a balloon leg look. Um, and so the look of that pant, um, Sophie, you mentioned aesthetics is really um, the key and functionality probably comes second. So we replicated that pant into a non-catheter bag pant um, that looks exactly the same because we were getting really good feedback about the style of it. 
Um, and so, yeah, we're really pleased with that pant. But um, like the ladies from So Yes, product development is always work in progress and we're looking to improve it and working with more women uh, living with catheters and in wheelchairs to uh, refine that product. Oh, here I am. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, th this is for everybody, okay, for all of you panelists. Um, if you could share your opinion on the future of fashion inclusion. I know we don't have a crystal ball, but you've been in the business for a while, you've, been, you've had experience. So, um, what do you, um, how do you think it's going to be? And maybe you can share some recent or maybe even future projects with us something that you can say again we can start in the order that i see you on the screen so so yes you would be the first well it's um as everybody knows i i think it's not uh, a crystal ball to say that it, uh, it's not that easy uh, for the moment in fashion so um it's really uh, been a difficult year so uh, I guess it will. Uh, it is for uh, for everyone uh, in fashion, I guess. But uh, we are still uh, having faith, and um, we we are trying to find some solutions because with a small brand, it's so difficult that we are also uh, looking for opportunities to work together with other uh, designers or uh, to, to not only keep the our own brand but to uh, to work together because uh, I, we believe together we are much stronger to have a more inclusive uh, uh, market that uh, people have a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, choice because uh, people that aren't uh, having a physical disab uh, disability have so, so much, much choice. choice. Yeah. So uh, we know in the world that there are so much uh, things that are so looking great for uh, people with disability and functional and uh, comfortable and uh, fashionable. So um, that's why we are thinking about having a, a more inclusive brand, uh, not only ours, but also to include others. A real network. Zazel, how do you envision the future? <laughs> uh, you're on mute. Um, I do think things are will change in the future, um, particularly artistically um, with the, some of the companies that I've worked for, Theater Breaking Through Barriers, which is a theater company that deals with persons with disabilities. We all talk about um, uh, having more options with our clothing, with our costumes, with our clothing. And we're very happy about that. Um, one of the actresses um, on Broadway, uh, she won a Tony Award and she talks about um, inclusive clothing. Um, Tommy Hilfiger has designed a line for us for inclusive clothing. So more and more designers are recognizing that they can be a part of who we are. And we wanna represent that. And I think that's going to happen. Thank you. Sophie, Morgan? Yeah, I think you touched on a really good point, Suzelle. I think for me where I think the, where, where, where I hope and I do think that we are going is that the mainstream brands will start to see that there's an opportunity that we so often talk about, which is, you know, the spending power and the pure numbers of us that are out there and how important it is to communicate with people who have disabilities and to cater for them. And I hope that there'll be a tipping point where we'll start to see us cross into the mainstream so that we can start to get as much choice as you guys were just talking about, you know, just get the same opportunities as people who don't have those kind of special requirements and special, um, you know, access needs and et cetera. But I also think, and I hope that to your point about this collaboration, I would love to see more of it, you know, to see us all coming together, just like we are now to see thinkers and um, to see designers and to see brands kind of work together, all be across this together so that people know where to go. Because I think half the problem that we face as customers or as designers is people don't know where to go to find us. It's it's almost it feels like people just, you know, I often find myself signposting to 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 the, look look at this work that's being done over here in Australia. Look at this work that's being done in America, and people go, "Oh, I didn't know about that." So, I feel we definitely there's a time now where, aside from waiting for the mainstream 
to hurry the hell up, which it is doing, but to kind of keep doing that. And Tommy Hilfiger's great, but we need more. We need to take that, uh, take those steps and come together and make sure that we are all working collaboratively so that we have any chance of really surviving this. And I think, you know, like you said, it is a difficult world out there right now, even more so with us not going out on the high street, et cetera, et cetera. So the more we can do to support each other, I think that's the way we'll survive and, and, and thrive in the future as well. Thank you. Uh, Jesse? Yeah, thank you. So uh, while everyone is getting excited about the collaboration um, need amongst this group, I, I would just like to take the opportunity to also say that um, colleagues that I'm working with both in Australia and the US have brought this up as well. Um, the need for some kind of um, adaptive clothing or inclusive fashion forum that we get together once a month. We share ideas, we point each other in the right direction. Um, so while we're having that discussion, I just put my hand up and say I'm really interested in something like that too. Um, for us, when I was looking at, um, when I was shopping for mum, even when I, I shop now looking at competitors in the accessible and adaptive clothing space, um, they're hard to find. And it's search terms is one issue, um, niche product shops is another issue. What I, what I would really love to see is adaptive and accessible clothing brought into the mainstream. It's been done with maternity wear, it's been done with plus size clothing. Um, we, our big department store in Australia is David Jones, who knows what department stores will look like after the pandemic, but there will always be online department stores. Uh, Netta Porter, for example. So this is another category that large fashion retailers should be incorporating into their product mix. Um, we're starting to see, <clears throat> pardon me, more representation um, uh, across the board by mainstream brands, and that's good. Um, we're starting to see um, some growth in product, clothing product available um, for the disability market, but I think it needs to go beyond that. There's things like dressing rooms, the dressing rooms that are available in current um, department stores uh, need far better consultation to make them work, to make women um, feel welcome and invited to shop in those environments. So yeah, from our perspective, it, it's training, it's product, it's representation, and it's pleasing to see that it that it's moving, but it's probably not quite moving fast enough. Thank you. Uh, we already have a question. Uh, maybe I can share. I can share it now from Maria Sullivan. She says, "Zazel and all panelists, I absolutely love your energy. It's infectious. I would like to ask for active wear. What is the best or most popular closure? Ankle to knee buttons, Velcro, or zips?" I am a designer myself and wondering what the most functional and helpful closure would be. Who wants to? Well, uh, I'm sporting right now this, this smart adaptive um, blouse that I received from smart adaptive um, clothing and it's incredibly functional um, with the Vel Velcro. I mean, I found it to be so useful I wish I had more shirts, hint, hint. <laughs> um, it's great. I mean, I wish that when I first became disabled and I was in rehab and going to occupational therapy that I had the, these these blouses because it would just enable me to, you know, learn how to use my, um, get dressed quicker, faster, more efficiently. So this is just wonderful. Noted. Thank you very much, by the way. And um, I make uh, 1960s and 1970s designs, so I think they'll be right up your street. I'll send you a few. Oh, that's what. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yay. <laughs> okay. Laugh, laugh. Wow, that's something to celebrate. Um, does any of the other panelists want to add something to this question, or should I go on with? the next question um the only thing i would add to that question is it it does it would depend on the end customer when we have started playing with magnets for closures 
Um, the, the feedback from a lot of the women we were working with, particularly in the medical sector, was their um, hesitance around magnetic closures because of their impact on other parts of the body, particularly the heart. So um, there's some beautiful products out there using magnetic closures and they've come a long way. So um, for sure, they certainly have a place. Um, but Velcro as, as the other um, um, option as a closure besides a button, um, this looks after a different part of the market. So it's really who, who exactly you're designing for and who it will work on. Thank you. Maybe um, the ladies from Sayas wanting to add something? I think it's um, difficult because uh, one person is very good with uh, one uh, solution uh, if they have uh, still abilities with their uh, dexterity or uh, or not. So it's um, we have all types of trousers and one is with uh, hook and eye, another one is with a button because there's no way that one pants can and solve the problems of people with uh, everybody. of everybody. So that's why we try to have a range of uh, trousers. So there's already at least one that is really fitting them uh, them well. So um, I don't think there's one answer to uh, to this question. I would just totally agree with that. I just chip in with a everybody's different, isn't it? I think one of the things that makes adaptive clothing both so brilliant and so challenging is that everybody needs something different. I mean, I, I, I'm sure like wheelchair users amongst us will, you know, me and Samantha, for example, we might choose completely different fixtures and fittings, but we have similar disabilities and, you know, we use both use wheelchairs, for example. So it isn't a one size fits all, is it? So I guess it just comes down to this kind of more bespoke element. And that's where it takes it out of it being quite, you know, easy to to slot into just any shop. And to your point, that brilliant point of why isn't there just an adaptive range, like there is a maternity range or a petite or a tall range. I thought this my whole life, well, my whole disabled life, I agree with you. But at the same time, it's like, I, I know that I wouldn't go into a shop and buy exactly the same thing as the next girl. So it's really hard. It's a, it's the, it is the question that we need to answer. I think it comes down to, it's a kind of chicken and egg because the more, you know, opportunity we can create to just be able to offer all those choices. So you go and you buy your pants online and your trousers and online, and there's the option. You can have it with a zip, you can have it with Velcro, you can have it with buttons, you know, like those choices, that's hard to do. And then it comes into cost, you know, we know all this, all this, but that's why I think to your point, it's not an easy question to answer with just one answer. I think it's quite nuanced. Thank you. Uh, and Maria says, thank you so, so, so much, panelists. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I have a question for Sophie and Zazel. I mean, we have a question. <laughs> um, can you tell us what it means to you about being a disability advocate? Yeah, Zazel, you're first oh, okay. on my <laughs> Okay, so um, I started um, to be being a disability advocate as soon as I became disabled, and even before that. Um, I've worked with persons with um, chronic illness, um, uh, particularly as a dancer, and uh, I also became a social worker. Um, helping persons with uh, disabilities. I've been to the uh, White House at the first um, uh, disabled conference, African, African American Disability Conference at the White House, where we addressed all uh, problems that people with disabilities occur in the US, which was just so, just so amazing because we were all there as a group and we were addressing every single problem that um, occurs for people in uh, who have disabilities, i.e. i.e. Uh, caretaking, um, uh, adaptive clothing, um, health insurance, we discussed everything. So I am, I go full speed ahead for helping people with disabilities as a disability advocate. Yes, yeah, just like you, Cicel, I, I, I became an advocate the minute I became disabled. I think one of the things that I found as someone with a visible and physical disability is that unless I advocate for myself, 
not a lot's going to get done. There's so many problems. You roll out of the front door and you take your pick of things that you could fight against, whether it's accessible transport, whether it's housing, whether it's clothing, whether it's work, employment, you know, there's so many issues. Um, and so for me, that's why I kind of became an advocate because I just, ha I couldn't not. But over the years, as my platform's grown, so have the issues that I now try and speak to. And it's just, it's just part of who I am now. I just can't imagine a life doesn't didn't involve somehow sort of trying to change the world or create the change that I really want to see because every day we encounter so many problems even in the UK which comparatively is 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 okay you know there's so much injustice and so much inequality when it comes to disability around the world and I've seen it firsthand when I've traveled and made films and done work overseas with charities etc there is so many issues that disabled people face. So we, we've, we've just all got to do our bit. And I think that unless we do that, you know, we're not going to move forward. And as they say with the, you know, the SDGs, we're going to get left behind. And so that's why, that's why it's so important, I think. And then also I have to add this, um, uh, with the pandemic, um, because there's just been so many cutbacks, the first thing that happens is if they're, they're cutting services for persons with disabilities. Yeah. All of the social service agencies and companies within New York City have dealt, are being dealt with just a huge blow to their services. And everyone in the disability community is feel is feeling the impact. So I have just been opening my mouth and going to conferences and to webinars and what have you, just to, you know, uh, present my voice so that these cutbacks won't continue to happen and that we won't feel the impact of it. It's a good point. You know, with COVID happening now in the UK in particular, most of the deaths that we've seen here, m the majority of people that have died from the pandemic have had a disability. So, Absolutely, you know, yeah. we're, 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 we're always at the forefront of the problems. And it's, it's something that if we don't as advocates, people like us don't speak out, you know, it, it, we have to, it's life or death, you know, it, it doesn't matter, it's more important than, than than anything, we have to always keep our voice, like you say, you have to represent, you have to go in there, you have to talk, but so often people just don't realise the consequences of, of you know, the, the larger picture and how that impacts people's lives, so yeah. And uh, I could also add this. I mean, many, many times persons with disabilities, they don't have the money to continue to provide for themselves. And that's why it's so serious right now with these cutbacks that we have to really be advocates for each other. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to share some, um, we have some questions. So from Annie. Uh, he says, I'm a disabled accessibility consultant trained in geriatric social work and systems design and work with a range of different people. One thing I've been trying to do is get companies recognize that they need to pay disabled people for their feedback and consider them as active parts of the design process. Have you been able to successfully get companies, organizations to act on and value disabled people's uh, um, lived experiences in ways that provide jobs and consulting roles for the other disabled people? Um, that's, can I say, that? okay, uh, I just, that's so interesting that you're asking that question. I just had a conversation with an organization that deals with persons, provides jobs for persons with disabilities, and they started their company maybe several years ago, and their total focus is to get persons with disabilities into the mainstream, into being employed. And their uh, name is Bender Consulting. I mean, at my, with my consultancy hat, it's one of my boxes that has to be ticked when I work with a retailer or when I work in any industry. It's sort of, we talk a lot about representation um, in our community and we talk about sort of seeing disabled women, for example, in, in this in the context of what we're talking about today, in magazines or modeling clothing, for example. But that's all well and good if behind the scenes in the companies and the structures in the in the in the in society, you know, if we're not seeing employment there, we're not seeing integration there, then what is the job for? What are we doing? So I think it's like the the whole it's got to be holistic. Everything's got to, it's not, this is all one big puzzle and there's so many little pieces that need to be fitted together. But I think 
it, yeah, we disabled people need to be employed, disabled people need to be paid. The value of disabled people must not be underestimated ever. I mean, that's, I think, my agenda is just to constantly put that at people's forefront of people's minds that this isn't the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. That's the key. So, yeah, <laughs> I could speak about this forever. Thank you. So, Ani says, thanks so much, everyone. And Jennifer says, yay. Another shout out to Bender Consulting. Joyce Bender is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, there's a message from Nancy Volpe Beringer. I hope I pronounce it well. Um, uh, nice to meet you here because I'm following you on Instagram, just so you know. <laughs> so she said, I have a new business concept for the adaptive market and would love the panelists' thoughts. So I think you can free to share. Uh, your idea or I don't know how you would like to get in contact with them. Okay, is it okay if I share it? It's fine to me. <laughs> okay. So when I was on Project Runway, I was very, uh, the adaptive market and being an all-inclusive designer was key. And I was, you know, ready to hit the ground running last March and then of course the pandemic. Fast forward, so I've been doing some research and that is my end goal. Fast forward, this past fall, there was a fire where I had my building, where I live in my studio. And I had to like overnight, we were displaced and I had to move everything. As I was moving everything, I saw how much excess designer clothes I had from all my consignment and love of shopping way back. So I thought what I would do, since my business was tanking, I would create my own platform with my team of me and uh, Yaz and started to do the resale, you know, as part of the sustainable market. And then so that I could raise money to design my adaptive line. And then I thought, well, why would I wait? Where is there a platform for the adaptive um, market so that I could take designer clothes that I was going to sell and have a drop down menu and say, how would you like me to adapt this like Stella McCartney or this Fendi thing or this Chanel whatever it is and adapt it to the specific customer or you know non -dis um, disabled but and like do you want the velcro or you know if it's a hidden placard i could still i would i would keep the integrity of this design but i would adapt it to the needs whether it's magnetic or velcro how how can i adapt the pants so that i would want to create a, a high end resale uh, market but catering to you know the adaptive um community also uh love it amazing yeah. it's that is idea. incredible that, that's, that's giving cool me chills idea. i mean i i i i think this ah i think there's yeah i think it's a fantastic idea because ultimately we are priced out and and that so in the market there's like you know that space that sort of high and by the way hi nancy I, i'm sophie lovely to meet you i didn't i i um this is just really exciting um the i think that that is a really i haven't seen that anywhere on uh, yet i haven't seen that anywhere i think that was a really amazing opportunity because for people with disabilities that kind of side of fashion that sort of higher end designer line at the end it feels really, really exclusive and we just can't get to it. So this is that bridge. You could be that bridge. I love it. I think it's great. You get yeah, my vote. I think it's an excellent um, idea. Yeah. We want to be there. We want that higher bridge. I mean, I don't know how I will adapt everything, but we we actually, have, my yes, we've taken all my stuff and we've sorted it to, okay, this could be adapted. I think I physically, I, I technically would know how to do it. I just want to know the specific needs. And that's why I thought I could have a drop down menu of mm -hmm. yes buy as is or and i would the other thing that's really key to me is that i would not charge for the adaptability i don't want uh -oh. my adaptive client to have to pay anything more than uh you know uh, if it's not adaptive and, and they're high-end pieces and i would just absorb the cost to adapt it and that's really important to me that it's not at a different price point oh amazing that I is that's, that's incredible it feels so much like what we need right now and forgive me if this exists already and i haven't seen it but we need a space a real hub online where we can go and sell our services 
it's like this or you know talk about brands talk about new ideas and it just be where everyone knows to go and and we can all collaborate it just i feel i feel like this is the missing part of the puzzle um but yeah i think that's a fantastic idea i think it's i well, yeah love to help if i can anyway see i'm yes. happy to talk to you later on and okay. we can do what we yeah. can do with the we have to spread the yeah. news spread the news that's yeah. wonderful and I, need, and I need help because i again i'm i'm in the learning it's like how best to it that was the one question like how best to adapt something and yeah. we're, we're curating the collection so that uh you know because it's by from my closet so for right now it's from my closet and there's a certain size but we're trying to pull out the pieces that are more uh, universal in sizes and also not everything with the waistband or if there is a waistband that I can figure out because on Project Runway with Tatiana, the Paralympiad, she was so helpful to me. And then on the runway when I had my um, disabled people, which I insisted with my, with my model selection with the producers, I said, I want, I'm inclusive. I want everyone represented and I, want, I wanted anyone and you know, so they, they listened to me at least. What could be cool, Nancy, in the in the long, it's sort of medium term as well, is approaching designers to to sort of send you items that can be because they're never going to do it. I mean, in a, it's a long shot that we're going to get these big designers to start yeah. making, you know, clothing that even just for one of their models on a runway. You, you know, it's just always such. It seems like well, so it could be that kind of again another way into that part of the fashion industry that we haven't yet had you could again make that make that step for us and then designers could come to you with clothing and and it could then be you know that's a great idea it's a really lovely idea. it's exciting actually well <laughs> just I, 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 I dressed up now <laughs> and why am i waiting to this is to raise money so i can do that so why why am i waiting like just start darn it just start adapting the clothes that you have um and i'm from and I got excited. It just popped in and we're really, really excited about it. But we just need to know. And, we're, you know, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to launch it this spring sometime. Um, but even if it's small, we're, gonna, we're doing it. We're committed. Love it. Thank, thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to thank, thank Nancy here because she's been my uh, uh, inspirational local Philly person. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Nancy. You rock. <laughs> Love the idea, girl. Thanks. Yes. So I'm going to read a couple of more comments. Um, so Maria says, I'm a former international athlete that now has ankylosing spondylitis. Everything you're saying is so right and so important. Um, Jennifer says, yay. Oh, no, sorry, I already read that. Sorry. <laughs> Maria sa says, sounds wonderful, Nancy. Uh, Annie says, you make it such a personal experience already that people can request their adaptations for one of a kind pieces that people are already treating as super special purchases. Love this. Such a universal approach to creating access, uh, to creating access. Love it. Um, then uh, Maria says, uh, Sophie, I'm building that at the moment. It launches in April. So I guess uh, about the hub. Uh, Ronya said, I'm um, adapting clothes for people who need it and also create little videos showing people how to do it if they want to try it themselves. I think this is great. I think this is really great. Uh, Barbara has a question. What are your favorite fabrics to wear, Zazel and Sof Sophie? Do you want to go, Zazel? You go for it, babe. I have to think about that for a second. Um, well, I, I know my answer quite quickly, actually, because it's a bit of a strange one. My favorite thing to wear is denim. I love denim, which is really restrictive because it's so unforgiving at times. And I've recently discovered a designer in Sweden. Some of you guys might know, Lou Linda Roth. She's a de denim designer. And she's literally changed my life, this girl, because I've been looking for jeans that fit perfectly and it's taken me 18 years of trying to find these jeans and Lou is a wheelchair user herself and what she used to do she's just teamed up with a big brand um Gina Trico is I think the name of the brand that she's just she and so she her design for adaptive jeans was actually then mainstreamed and you could buy like it was just fantastic but she adapts her denim so that she cuts an extra space out of the back so as a someone who's seated it 
then gives you that bit at the back so it's higher up and she adapts the front as well it's just really comfortable so i think denim for me is on, on the top on the bottom on the top i don't mind any, anything anything colorful oh well she says wearing black but anything fun and funky and yeah i because i don't have so many problems and i've got full use of my hands so i don't have to be too picky about what i wear on top um yeah or the other i mean to be honest with you when i'm when i'm being lazy leggings 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 i live in <laughs> leggings <laughs> Um, I live in leggings too. Um, being a dancer, of course, I always have leggings. However, I'm not wearing leggings as much because you cannot gear your you can, you can't gauge your weight, so you can always gain weight and not know what you, <laughs> what size you are because you're always wearing the leggings. Um, I also favor um, cotton and polyester just because it's just like easier to move in, and I do, of course, have a love just like Sophie um, of denim. I just, I'm crazy about denim. However, um, as I mentioned before, some of the de denim pants are slim fitted and it has been very, very hard for me to get my, my brace in the, the um, fit of the pants. So now I constantly look for pants that are wide legged or bell bottomed, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so Barbara asks, does the denim have spandex in it? I think this is for Sophie. Yeah, the, so d some of the jeans that, that Lou put out with, through this brand, Gina Trico, Tricot, I don't think, no, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, they always had stretch in them. Um, but what she does do is, or what she has done is you can buy some jeans, you can send them to her and she'll, she'll modify them for you. So that's another another solution that she provides. But aside from Lou and her work, there are a, a number of other jeans uh, providers. I just, for me, they work. I, I like Lou's the, the way she designs. They they just she's my style. But there's there's lots of other ones out there. Um, I'm I'm you know the girls, everyone, everyone on this panel list can point us in the, point you in the direction of the other um, de designers, trouser designers. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm rambling. <laughs> yeah, I think the girls from So Yes can can answer that one as well. Yeah, well, we have a, a, a lot of jeans, yes, but it's um, it's always uh, difficult to have um, one pair of jeans that fits all. That, that's really not possible. So, um, and we, we have jeans for, for women uh, and we have a lot for men. Um, our range for women is, um, is not that wide. Uh, as for men and that's really something else that I wanted to ask too because um, we sell uh, men clothing for 80% and really uh, we would like to expand our range of clothing for women but uh, of course when we don't have the, the, enough of public uh, for women why would we yeah, have a lot of a range of clothing so we have jeans but we don't have 10 of them in different styles and different uh, types so, um, and for men we have. So that's really something that we really think it's a, it's a horrible because we want to expand it. But um, I think, I don't know, it's a question for you. Why, why do we have so many men that think, is it because they think it's functional, it exists, so give me three of them? Or is it because women want to have uh, a lot of choice and uh, perhaps don't want to have adaptive clothing? I don't know. So uh, we would love to expand our uh, our brand. We have jeans. We would like to have a lot of them, but it's dif uh, difficult to have uh, different types of them because um, uh, we have wide legs. Uh, we need wide legs. We need uh, this type of closure, this type of closure. So it's not that easy. And um, it's not like we have. We are from Zara that we have uh, ten thousand of uh, a piece. So uh, that's something difficult to us, really. Can I just feed into that? I think it's such a, it's really interesting observation that men have flocked to your solution more than women. And I'm wondering why, and I think back to my initial reaction to adaptive clothing, I used to really shy away from it. When I first had my injury, I used to sort of, but I mean, I'm not, I, 
it was nothing like your designs. It was that kind of more, it looked like for old people, if there was a mm -hmm. real, like, I don't want to go there. I'm a young person. I'm an active person. I want to be stylish. And so that kind of label of adaptive was one that took me a while to, to like. So I mm -hmm. wonder if, if, I wonder if there is that barrier and I wonder how, I mean, I know now all of us sitting here now know that the solutions that you guys provide and that are out there on the market don't meet that criteria, but is there a stigma there that women maybe just unconsciously have? I don't know. I mean, I, I've got, I've, it's been so long since I've had mine that I've got rid of it, but I, I'm not sure. I think that, I think to your point about wanting a lot of choice, I think we do. I think women do want that mm -hmm. men like, yeah, give me five of that in that color. That'll in different colors, you know, that'll do. Whereas we want to do, we want to mix it up and mess. Of I course. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there's, um, th there's Amy says, Gesund or Gesund. I don't know. I'm sorry. Is an inclusive directory for those who would like to list their business. It is free on this platform. And then uh, Ronya says, uh, adaptive clothing have the stigma that they are just sensible, not fashionable. I guess that's that's also a point. Um, okay, so I personally have a last question, and I know that Samantha has the very last question. <laughs> um, oh, Maria says, could I please ask if I can share the details? about the platform I'm launching if the panelists would have any advice or anything I have not covered um, I think that's okay I think so Maria please oh, that would be wonderful um, hello everybody um, so basically I've been working for the past six months to with uh, fashion angels in the British Library and um, working with a group of counselors and um, chiropractors and medical teams um, and putting together a platform that I'm building that's going to have, um, uh, it will be a marketplace for people to, for shops to sell their um, inclusive designs, but in the background, it'll also be support groups and educational information on for both designers, um, I'm pushing hard for designers to get more um, support. Um, and uh, also, sorry, I, I'm quite shy. So, <laughs> uh, but also um, a forum for like, um, for example, you know, people with new children, um, you know, new babies to be able to learn how to dress babies with tubes and, you know, there's so many things. Um, I also have counsellors and people working with um, fitness that are going to do classes online and I also have some people that are working with that are, uh, know all about the benefits in the UK that will be able to support people with any kind of uh, disability so if anyone had if, if you would be able to advise of anything that you think I could add or you know that would support people or to help would be hugely grateful. Maria, if you could send, um, uh, just write down, please, the, the name of the platform and there we can send after all, like uh, an email for all the participants and there if someone wants to help, uh, we, we can do that, if that's going to Thank to you. Help. Thank you. So I think we need to move to the end as it's now otherwise going to be too long. Um, and I would like to make the final questions for you guys before the, the final considerations. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Jesse. Um, what is your message to the world? What you have to say? What's, so think about, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask all of you the same question. So if you could leave a single message to the world, what would be your message? Uh, I think it would be be more open and, and be kind. And um, I think it would be as simple as that. Thank you. So, so yes, what would be your message? 
Well, I think it's important that we work together, that we just um, have the solutions that we think about, that we share them and that we can uh, have a lot of brands together, united. So uh, I think that is something uh, that we would like yes. for the future. Thanks so much. Sophie, what is your message to the world? To the whole wide world, what is my message? <laughs> um, I've got a lot of messages for the world right now. Um, a nice message I've got, I think just uh, echo the be kind. I think um, treat others as you would treat, you, you know, you would like to be treated. And I think when it comes to the context of disability specifically, just basically stop underestimating disabled people, <laughs> stop undervaluing. Um, yeah, okay, this is quite a difficult question to just do, just do one answer, so I'll, I'll mute myself. <laughs> Thank you. And you, Zazel. Oh, one second, is your, your mute? Uh, it's such a huge question, but um, always desire to help others to be warm, compassionate and loving and the desire to be your best and to go above and beyond for people. Wow. Guys, thank you so much for your participation. I We, we can thank you enough. Uh, Jesse, Sophie, Zazel, else from so yes, yeah, Sophie and Jesse was well. This was a fun, <laughs> it was a fun, um, funny panel because we had Jesse and Jesse, Sophie and Sophie, uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of the same names. Like okay, how we can communicate with that? Um, thanks for everyone that was part here. That also um, uh, adding some input and everything. What we aim to do here is um, to make our community. Uh, to make this strong and bring um, always new subjects um, to the table where we can learn with each other and brands and people that has their personal stories. And um, uh, I also would like to invite you, we have a WhatsApp group that we talk about fashion uh, it's just about fashion and inclusion. So if some of you want to be part of the group, we have a form um, that people need to fill so um, we know and put the kind of the rules in, 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 in place, but basically is to talk about um, fashion. So if everyone wants to participate of the group, you are more than welcome. Contact me, Nancy or Angela, and we can send you guys the form. And I'm happy to announce that in three months' time, we are going to be talking about shoes. So it's another very polemic subject, as trousers is an, an, another one that is one of the hardest things probably to, to be talking about. Uh, mainly for me as like Sophie, wheelchair users, and needs to have the proper one. and. So we are going to be talking about shoes. Um, so let's spread the word. And um, uh, I don't think, uh, Angela, Nancy, do you like to say anything? This, um, this um, live has been recorded. So it's going to be on, on my YouTube channel um, later on in the week. So you're more than happy to share. Um, and yeah, Nancy. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, everyone. Our panelists, Sophie Squared, Jesse Squared, Zazel, everyone, your questions, ideas. This is exactly why we started our talk, to bring everyone together. Oh my God, I'm literally getting the chills again. I'm so happy, literally chills from head to toe. This is how we make change. And all of you sharing, being so open, being vulnerable, putting it out there, like, let's keep doing this. I agree. We're stronger together. We can collaborate. You are all badasses, which is my highest compliment I could ever give anyone. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody. And um, that's the last message from myself. I'm really, really, I mean, this was really an unexpected result. And uh, I think there was so much valuable contribution. And yes, if you want to join our WhatsApp group or if you feel more comfortable in writing to us, you have our emails, you have my emails. If you receive like three, four times the link for today, feel free to write back and we will share uh, your ideas or we'll put you in touch with other professionals or people that we believe can be of you know any positive use for uh, our mission as. I like to think about it. So um, thank you. I would say, well, we do have 15 more minutes if you have other questions. If not, from plan would be a good night, but for others, I think <laughs> this <would be> day. <laughs> yeah. So any more questions, the final question or? I think is that. So, guys, really, thank you so much. Looking forward to talk to you. And at some point, after all this pandemic, maybe get together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yes. Take care. Guys, thank you so much. It's lovely thank, to meet you. You. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Now, so. Bye. <laughs>